Let's talk about the facts. 64% of black children don't live with their fathers. There's one out of every two don't live with their fathers. Now, they might have at some point. They might later. But at some point in their life, they will not live with their fathers. That's a significant issue. But as a therapist, you have to withhold judgment until you know the reasons why. Because guess what? Some non-custodial parents are impossible to live with. Some sisters can't tolerate that father. Some fathers can't tolerate that sister. And if you put two people in a house who absolutely don't want to be there, domestic violence is likely to follow. And so now you got your children in a home, but it ain't a happy one. And your daughter is watching this back and forth friction. And your son is watching this back and forth friction, which does what? So the seed in their mind that it's okay to be disagreeable with your mate, or maybe you arguing with their father, you arguing with their mother may have pissed them off so much that they decide to never get married at all. Or maybe daddy mistreated mommy so much that I'm not even going to spend my life with a man. I'd rather spend it with a woman. Oh, yes, I specialize in homosexual therapy for our teenage people. Okay? Yeah, you'd be surprised the stories I get for why they became that way. I can always tell you what it was. If it's a girl, she's a lesbian, guess what? She was either sexually abused, physically abused, verbally abused. She was stripped of her father. She was raised to believe that black men were nothing. Okay? She was bullied by boys and told she was ugly her whole life. I always know what it is. Same thing with the boys. Father wasn't there. The mother psychologically castrated. Now, what do I mean by that, mothers? Because you know y'all tongue can cut. <laughs> Watch what you say to your son. Y'all be on the street. Oh, you ain't going to be no good. You're going to be just like your father. I wish I never had you. You don't ever say that to a child. Because if you keep on telling him he's nothing, sooner or later he might just decide to make you a believer. Yeah. That's right. This is when they give up on trying to prove to you that they can be somebody because you never believed they could. But psychologically speaking, what do we know? Many of us beat up on our children because we don't think much of ourselves. Did y'all hear that? There's a direct relationship between child abuse and low self-esteem of the parent. That is a replica of you. And because you don't like you, how the hell are you going to like your offspring? Ah, shit! In America, mothers are more likely to prevent interaction between father and child for personal reasons rather than factors relevant to child development. This ain't just black women either. Ladies, the child came through you, but it don't belong to you. Not from an African frame of reference. Study your culture. If you want to go back to Egypt, at least study how the families were viewed. Okay? The child comes through you, but it belongs to the community. You have to get rid of this consciousness that says, that's my child. I carried her. I carried him. They look just like me, not you. It don't matter if you spit them out. That's still their daddy. It takes two to make that child, not one. And guess what? If you try to do it by yourself, you're going to make a mistake because God did not design humanity to be raised in a house of one parent. See, you need 50% feminine energy and you need 50% masculine energy. That's the balance. All of us are half male, half female, but one dominates or should. Okay? <laughs> Stop laughing! <laughs> so, if your daughter don't get validated by her father, she'll spend the rest of her life looking for validation. Now, you teach her how to be a lady, but he must validate her womanhood. Mm. Don't you ever forget that. If your son is always up under your skirt, and never get that masculine structure, he might start wanting to wear one. And if the biological father's not around, uncle, grandpa, brother in the community, make sure you see their child abuse record. Make sure you go on Megan's Law, because we got pedophiles in our community. That's right. But the thing about pedophilia that's so sad, which is related to this, because when fathers are not there, the risk of all that go up. See, when a man know that another man ain't having it with his, I don't care how pathological he is. He might have every label in this mother. But if he know you ain't having it, he will fix himself. <laughs> that's right. Oh, I'm usually 
sick, but not with this child. I'm healthy as a mother. The facts, black fathers are less likely to disclose the pain surrounding their absence from their children's lives, which can lead to misperceptions about their commitment. I deal with this all the time. The black man's hard exterior, we don't like to let people know we hurt. I can't see my children, but I can't let nobody else know that. So to the world, it looks like what? He don't care. But when Dr. Umar gets him in the office and we start talking, he got to muster all the spiritual energy in his body not to let that tear flow because it hurts us. And we got to talk about it. And fellas, we got to do what? We got to start developing some support groups for black men where we come together and talk about what it is to be a black man. I didn't say your Moorish philosophy. I didn't say my Pan-Africanism. I didn't say your Hebrewism, your Quran, or your Bible. I didn't say whether you're Democrat or Republican or no party. We ain't going to talk about that. We're going to talk about nothing else than what life is like on a day-to-day -day basis. Are y'all following me? Yeah. And sisters, y'all got to do the same thing. Y'all need sister circles. Y'all can rotate houses. This is going to be at my house tonight. Next, next Friday, this is going to be at her house. The third Friday, and we're going to come together. Make sure you have somebody frisk them down for weapons. Because <laughs> some of us are crazy. Right? And y'all want to talk about not religion and how you need Christ and you need to take your Shahada or you need to read Mr. Garvey's philosophy. We ain't going to talk about that. You need to go natural. We ain't going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what it is and what we go through as a black woman. And do y'all have some advice for me? Because I'm trying to let my son be in his father's life, but he keeps disrespecting me. Well, do anybody in here, have, well, my husband went to school with your baby dad. So maybe I can have him talk to him on a man to man, and maybe the four of us can come together and sit there. Well, I don't think he would know. They were pretty cool. And the next thing you know, you can work the situation out because we use group power. We got to go back to group power. I'm getting sick and tired of this African individualism. That ain't us. That's white folks. Fathers, make sure that the custodial parent, the mom, the grandma, doesn't turn you into a police officer only for your children. Some of us are destroying the relationships with our children because we allow the custodial parent to only call on us for police reasons. Are y'all following me? He's hanging with gangs. He's sneaking girls in the house. He's not going to school. Teachers are... Uh-uh. If you don't have a relationship with your son, you don't have grounds to discipline. Discipline must be done with love or it's not discipline. It's abuse. And that goes for the ladies too. If you are non-custodial and that parent says, look, you need to come and get them because you're the mom and she's a girl or you're the dad and he's a boy, you have to politely tell them, I need to get to that point. Me and my son just hook back up. I cannot risk destroying this relationship so you can have law and order in your house. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but if you never kept me out in the first place, we wouldn't be going through this. So I don't like what he's doing to you. Even if I do, I'm not going to tell him. I don't like what he's doing to you, but I got to build the relationship first. The worst thing I could do as a therapist is come in and go right to a child's problem. You never do that. Well, I saw him, you know, playing with his ding ding at night. I sit down with her son. I'm not going to talk about that. That boy don't know me. Hey, why are you playing with your meat, son? Hey, <laughs> Your mama said she was flocking a flogger. What's wrong? I can't do that. I got to, how you like school? Do you got a relationship with your dad? What's your after school program? Who your favorite basketball player? And then the parents is coming in and saying, excuse me, sir, we paying you, right? For the past four meetings, you've done nothing but talk about what my son liked to do. And then I got to explain to the parent that therapy or building a relationship with your child who you ain't seen in a while is like unpeeling an onion. You got to take it layer by layer. You don't go straight in or you'll muster the whole damn onion up. Okay? I got the peel. And when I think he's comfortable enough with me, then I slowly start touching the reason you asked me to meet with him in the first place. That's the same thing you do as a non-custodial parent. Remember, a good parent is a what? Benevolent dictator. A good parent is a benevolent dictator. What is a benevolent dictator? Someone who controls the outcome, but to the people they controlling, 
they're not even aware of it. It's like the United States government and black people. Okay? Okay? So when you're dealing with your children, you got to be the same way. Your son say, Dad, I want to go over here and play basketball for high school, but that school got the worst murder rate in the neighborhood, but they are number one in the country, right? So you're like, I need him over here. I got to find a way to kind of make him want to go there without me telling him he's going to go there. So I might take him to an open house. I might take him to a couple games. I might set it up for some of the players to come holler at my son. That's what a benevolent dictator does. You are a strategist. I don't want my daughter hanging with them girls no more. But I can't come out and tell her that. I got to find a way to make her like this group. You must become a benevolent dictator. Never steal from your children the ability to make decisions for themselves because if you do, when they become adults, they'll be so anxious about making decisions that they'll never be able to. These are the people who use smoke cigarettes all the time, alcohol all the time, to drown out their worry because they grew up in homes where the father root with an iron fist, the mother root with an iron fist. All you're doing is messing those children up. It's like a girl who's 15 and naturally she's liking boys and you telling her, I better not see you looking at them, touching them, talking to them, boom, boom. Then she's like, damn, what you want to be gay? What's going on in this house? Okay? You can keep her from having sex, but you want to introduce her slowly to masculine energy so she'll know how to deal with it up in college when your ass ain't around no more. And she become the biggest buck wow at Morgan. <laughs> Talking about my baby got Jesus in her life. Yeah, and a few other people. They say we sleep in the bed that we made. And under the cloak could cover us kids to the play. And that's when it gets complicated. But I'm still glad you made it. And for you, I continue to push to this day. And everybody asks me how I'm looking so happy. Without a partner involved, a traditional family. I tell them, it takes a village to raise a child. Until the village gets the message, I'm living the here and now. And I'm fighting back proud.